Another day, another box at the Royal Society, another fragile item. Very fragile, that, Brady. That I'm sure Keith is feeling nervous about. Now, I'm going to be honest, I'm not hugely excited by this item, but Keith is, so I think the onus is on you to okay. enthuse me. Um, but it's, it's just beautiful, Brady. You, you, you're going to love it. As we like to say on objectivity, Keith, what's in the box? Well, let, let's take a look. This is quite fragile. Here we have William Thompson, Lord Kelvin, one of the great scientists and engineers of the 19th century. Immortalised in what seems to be a plate. It is. This is glass. So it's quite a, a fragile medium to put a, a portrait onto. It sort of has a three-dimensional relief to it. His ears stick out, his nose sticks out. That's exactly right. So it's what's called cameo glass. You can see it's not just a portrait of Kelvin, but it's an entire background scene and if James gets close enough, he can probably just see my fingers through the back of this. It is ever so slightly see-through and it just gives it that translucent, luminous set of qualities which makes it such a rare and lovely object. You're not going to let me hold that, are you? Uh, if you're very, very careful, Brady. Yeah. Here we go. Is this, is this valuable? It's extremely valuable, yes. It's well, you ra I've never seen you raise your eyebrows quite so high. <laughs> like proper, proper. Uh, proper, proper multi-thousands of pounds worth of valuable, yes. Can we have a look at the back yeah, of the well, back? Yeah, let's take a look at the back. Okay. It's a kind of a reddy colour on the back. It is, and it's got a particularly horrible label on the oh back my goodness. as well. That's really rather nasty. It does tell you a little bit about it. It says, Engraving on Glass by George Woodall and it was presented to the Royal Society in 1905. In fact, you can see that the artist has just carved his name into the glass there, so you should just be able to see George Woodall. And Woodall is, is part of a, a tradition of this kind of art that stretches back to Roman times. You must have heard of the Portland vase. It's a very, very famous piece of Roman glassware. It's in the British Museum. It was discovered in Italy and purchased by a fellow of the Royal Society, William Hamilton, whom we know and love because of his work on volcanoes. And we did, we discussed his volcano door. Indeed. He brought this, this beautiful piece of, of glassware to England, where it eventually uh, passed into the hands of, of the uh, Duke of Portland, from where it gets his name, and then to the British Museum. But it was such a rare and lovely object and the techniques used to make it were so little understood that people tried to copy it. Now, the most famous person who, who tried to have a go at this was another fellow of the Royal Society, Josiah Wedgwood. And Wedgwood is terribly well known as a potter, an innovative manufacturer. He didn't, he didn't mind making a few plates. He didn't mind making a few plates. And uh, of course, Wedgwood is, is still a famous name in these circles today. Wedgwood eventually managed to make a pretty good replica but of course, many other people tried and they began to, to try and emulate the technique for this kind of, of work of art. And George Woodall is probably the best of the people who, in the later 19th century, attempted to use these yeah, multiple layers of glass and then you would engrave down on them to, to get this depth effect and coloured effects too. I imagine this, the appeal of this would go well beyond science enthusiasts like me. This, this has yeah. a value that transcends science. Well, that's right. It, it has a, a value as, as an aesthetic thing, an aesthetic object, but also as a portrait of a genuinely great scientist. Kelvin's work on thermodynamics and his interests in cable laying across the Atlantic are very well known. He was a scientist who worked in many areas and was, in the end, a big figure. And Keith, what happens with this plate now? We saw it all uh, covered in bubble wrap and in a box. Does, mm. this, does this come out to play very often or is this too precious for that? Not very often. It's very precious. Uh, we will every now and again bring it out for exhibition purposes, but uh, it is quite a, a rare thing. Well, we're lucky to get to see it, so thank you very much. So if Pompeii was being excavated and he was around the place and he's responsible for this book, I'm taking a guess that that volcano is Vesuvius. Indeed it is. It is. And the uh, Chevalier Hamilton was there at just the right time in the 1760s when the volcano began to get very, very active indeed.